Tsiji provides rice to starving families without any other resources in Zimbabwe. A Dai Child Care Center continues after being found in 2017 by Tsiji Singapore Chapter. I'm Sean Scanlon, this is Dai Headlines. Let's get started. In Zimbabwe, many people struggle to survive every day and a package of rice can allow a family to live yet another extra day. September of this year, Tsiji distributed rice to help 1,480 impoverished families in need. Let's take a look. Same as before, the Zimbabwe people stand aloud to express their gratitude. My life is really difficult because of my health. I cannot do many things. I just want to say thank you for the rice so that my family can live one more day. After receiving 10 kilograms of rice, the Zimbabwe people no longer frowned. To volunteers, what they offered was love and care. Volunteers helped those with mobility issues, visually and physically impaired one by one. At the distribution site, it seemed that the smell of rice was all around. My daughter has passed away, leaving my grandson for me to take care of. I am grateful to you guys. You really helped me a lot. You make me feel a bit relieved. I am going home to cook for the kid. This mother was moved to tears. Poverty and hunger are serious. The bag of rice on their heads represent their difficulties are temporarily solved. Uh, what is happening here today is uh, they are giving out uh, rice uh, to the vulnerable. Uh, I've learned uh, from Tutsi that we are all one, uh, besides of uh, skin color, uh, wherever one is coming from, but we are all one. There are three distributions in total today. I'm so grateful. Some people are assisted by their family members while some turned up by themselves. Frontiers also gave out masks to Simbari people so that they can go home with peace of mind. An apartment complex in Dallas, Texas experienced a gas explosion earlier this year, which impacted 88 households and 23 buildings. Tsiji received a call of assistance from the government to help care for displaced citizens, presenting them cash cards and a warm hug. Here's more. A gas explosion blasted through Highlands Hills apartment in Dallas, Texas, leaving debris flying some 20 to 30 yards away. A total of 23 apartment complexes were nearly destroyed and hundreds became homeless. And that happened, it kind of put all of us in a bad position. We've all been staying in hotels and at the moment nobody knew what was going on. Most of those affected are from low-income families, and the government reached out to Tsiji for help. The foundation responded with a cash card distribution. Early estimates were 88 households, but the final count was 23 households. Others will return to their apartment after the safety check is complete, and they will be able to resume their normal lives. One parent holds a three-month-old baby to receive financial aid as they can finally sleep better tonight. One veteran is moved to tears as he was thrown from his house from the explosion and is still quite shaken. Oh, Lord. That's a blessing. Thank you. You are blessed. God is good. God is good. If he is. A hug to console and settle their hearts, while the Green Bamboo Coin Bank gives them motivation to repay society. It's just sad that we're going through this, but by y'all here for this, this tremendously. But you guys give us inspiration to keep going and like keep fighting and keep looking, so I do, do I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Siji also sends care to the firefighters who were injured in the line of duty hoping to help ease the pain and suffering in these times. Mobile Vision Clinic from the Zigi U.S. headquarters has been called into action. And in mid-September, they visited Pacific Clinic, one of their longtime partner clinics, to help patients 
examine their eyes, get prescription glasses, which is a godsend for patients who can't afford it otherwise. Take a look. As the number of vaccinated individuals in Southern California increased, the mobile vision clinic by the U.S. city headquarters was able to go back into action when serving the retired or low-income residents. The mobile clinic uses a special payment method when taking their Medicare health insurance card. When the mobile vision clinic is active, we also come across patients who don't have insurance. The way we treat these patient cases is the same we do at the medical center. We use a sliding payment scale and charge something which is affordable in their financial situation. Of course, if they cannot pay for the medical service at all, then we do not ask them to pay. In the last 20 years or so, Jose Campos has just been purchasing cheap glasses, which really wasn't suited to his prescription. First time when I used them, they gave me headaches for like two, three weeks. Then after that, I get my eyes, get used to it, and no more headaches. On this day, not only an ophthalmologist was available to check his vision, but he also received two pairs of glasses, one farsighted and one for nearsightedness. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, I can, I can see the light now. This is my gift today. Having worked with the Pacific Clinic for so long, it was great for Tsuji to resume the partnership. A second-hand computer helps motivate disadvantaged students to work hard in their studies. In Malaysia, Digi volunteers from Malacca gave a scholarship student a second-hand laptop so they may continue their studies with greater ease. Technology can make a great difference in the lives of these students. Here's more. College is about to start for Pavitra. Before she leaves, she's most worried about her brother and sister's ability to keep up with their remote learning. It will be hard for them to do remote learning on one mobile phone. If my younger brother wants to use the cell phone, then it will be hard to share the phone. Thankfully, before I leave for college, City Volunteers gave us a laptop. It's hard to share one phone since their remote learning hours are the same, but now I don't have to worry and can head off to college. Pavitra's worries were solved by Zuji volunteers from Malacca, who came to give the family a second-hand laptop so the younger siblings can use it for their schoolwork. I am so happy and so surprised. Zuji has really helped us a lot, so I will do my best in schoolwork as repayment. In the past, I didn't have a computer, but now I do, and I can use it for school, for schoolwork, everything. Knowing their mother works hard to make ends meet for the family, the two sisters have long received Zuji scholarship. The two are very mature and have outstanding grades. I don't want to bother my mother. She has two jobs. I don't want her to work as much. After my first job, I have a part-time job. No one is around to give us money. I work in the early morning and get home at midnight. Thank you for your long-term help. And now you have even given us a computer for the kids. This love from society helps these children on their path to education. The G Singapore chapter began operating a Dai child care center in 2017, providing a place for students to study and regroup after school. In 2020, when the pandemic shut everything down, it remained open for those adults working on the front line so they can continue working without worrying about their children's welfare. Take a look. <laughs> Because 
This black and white building left over from the British colonial period was turned into the Singapore City Great Love After School Care Center in 2017. This peaceful environment has helped create a good learning space for the children that come here. I think after school child care is a fun place to go. I can eat nutritional food here and also concentrate on my homework. The teachers will check the students' homework progress, making sure they complete their work, helping the students learn not to procrastinate. I like the after-school child care educators. If I don't know a character, I'll ask them. You will have to practice and they will test you. Now I'm able to get 100% on my listening and writing. Yes, the staff is very strict on the kids. And the same time, they are kind also. Everything they take care of here. So for me, like a working, working mother, so less burden for me actually, yeah. During the pandemic, Siji's after-school child care did not close. They helped the students with online learning, making sure their homework was turned in on time, as some of the grown-ups could not attend to the children. For those on the front line, the health workers cannot take a break, so their children must come to the after-school child care. They are here from 7 to 7. It might be a little long, but as we will make sure their homework is done, the grown-ups will rest at ease a bit more. Doing their best to be the support for the adults, the city after school child care has become these children's second home as they learn and grow in this loving environment. A Singapore Zigi after school child care class, in addition to accompanying children to complete their schoolwork, also focuses on self care and moral education for children so that they can learn to do their duties and develop positive values, planting a seed of kindness in their hearts. Here's more. Washing the dishes and wiping the table after having meals, these actions could not be done when Min Xi entered the after-school care class three years ago. We decided to come here because she may not know many things, but I feel that the teachers here are tolerant. Minghee knows that she needs to wash dishes after having meals. She knows how to do it step by step. The teachers here will allow her to do it by herself. In addition to providing an after-school learning environment for children, Singapore Suzy's Great Love Student Care Center also teaches students how to take care of themselves through daily activities. Sometimes I'll help the teacher sweep the floor. I learned it in the after-school child care class when I was in primary one. I'll also help my mom hang the clothes and throw the garbage. My mom is very happy with that. The center also emphasizes inculcating positive values in students. Under the influence of humanities, students are guided to have kind thoughts. Children within 7 to 12 years old are still very young. They really cannot distinguish between right and wrong. Their time spent here is a lot longer than at home. Plus, if we keep repeating our words, they will actually embed the wording in their hearts and will not forget. The after-school child care class taught me many good things like respecting the elders, helping others and being polite. We have to say thank you every day, like when we leave the center, we need to say thank you. When we collect the meals, we need to say thank you, because volunteers are there to arrange our meals and I am happy when I go home every day. Incorporating humanities into daily life to inspire children's kindness so that they can learn to be sensible and independent. At Zigi University of Science and Technology, there is a group of foreign students from Indonesia. This summer, because of the epidemic, the students are temporarily unable to return to their home country. How can they live a fruitful life when they stay in school? The school teacher gave them a special mission about vegetarianism. Let's find out together.
个是你们做的，对不对？对。哦，很好吃。哇，谢谢老师。对对对,對。今年暑假刚好一年学生也没办法回到。It just happened that the Indonesian students were unable to return to Indonesia this summer. We needed to arrange something for them to learn. This course is about consumer behavior. We hope that from a consumer's perspective, students can understand consumers' mindset and needs so as to find out how to attract them. So I asked them to introduce their Indonesian products, but make it vegetarian. Among six groups of students, some made Indonesian chili sauce and banana chips. Two groups made fried noodles, one made fried spaghetti, the other cooked fried macaroni. They need to produce their own food, package and advertise it, as well as do sales and provide after-sales service so that they would experience a complete set of operating procedures. Take chili sauce as an example. In fact, the taste of chili sauce is heavier in Indonesia. They may use non-plant-based ingredients, such as some fish sauce or meat-based soy sauce seasonings, chicken powder, spring onions, and garlic. I asked them to change it. They need to make a strict vegan chili sauce, but with the traditional Indonesian flavor retained. The teacher told us to make a vegan chili sauce, so we have adjusted the amount of seasoning, salt, and sugar. We have added a little more salt. How do you? How do you? We found that. Even with all the meaty ingredients, we are still able to make chili sauce delicious. So it's not that difficult to turn our food vegetarian. Because banana chips are a special snack in Indonesia, we also found that the bananas in Taiwan are also overproduced. Originally, I thought that vegetarian food was not tasty, but if we turn Indonesian food into vegetarian food and we don't change its original taste, it is still delicious. So I think this is a way to attract many people to go vegetarian. We found that students did not eat vegetarian food, so we went to investigate why. It turned out that students found vegetarian food inconvenient and tasted plain. But in fact, vegetarian food can be delicious and cheap, so we wanted to bring these vegetarian foods to the campus. And through promotion, everyone can gain a broader understanding that vegetarian food is different from what they imagined. Can Someone would often tell me that it's inconvenient to be vegetarian, so we try to make it convenient. If he thinks vegetarian food is expensive, then we find a way to give him a discount. If he thinks that no one goes vegetarian with him, then we will make it a group effort to go vegetarian. We see every hindrance as an opportunity. Because of difficulties, we have the opportunity to break through. Once we break through it, everyone will change their stereotype towards vegetarianism. Dating back to the 1950s, when the Wuling Farm was founded, a fish patrol team was founded and continues to operate in Nanshan to protect the Formosan landlocked salmon. The spirit of this group to protect a precious natural resource is passed down from generation to generation. Here's more. Oh. 
Tianan. Yes, Tayo indigenous people are also called Nanshan Paiyan. It's not easy to do this. Our spirit is still here to do this. Normally the water is like this, but when a typhoon comes, there will be a lot of water and our bridge will be pushed further down. Our Formosan landlocked salmon is here. Yes, you can see it. Take a picture here. There's another one. Oh, that's a big one. It's very clear with its spots and streaks. I first came when I was in middle school. This year I want to bring some of the youth from the tribe over here. We have to bother some of the elders to make a bridge and maintain this trail and how to care for the fish. Hello. There's no cement or bricks. These indigenous people follow the wisdom of their ancestors and built this wooden bridge by drawing upon materials from nature. There are even more handrails here and it was only completed in early September this year. The old bridge, made four years ago, was washed away after heavy rains. There's no way the Indian rubber tree will not rot right away. Originally, it was only this log and then we added two more and then the handrails. This made it easier for our patrol members and the Shepa research team to pass through. It's very convenient to walk over safely and conveniently. The school kitchen at the Zhiji Senior High School affiliate with Zhiji University has launched a charity bazaar to sell lunch boxes. In addition to raising money to purchase vaccines, it also has the intention of promoting vegetarian food. I leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.